All right, welcome back. So, um, ignore the stuff uh, <laughs> down here. Um, they won't be relevant until later, except for a couple things that I wanted to go ahead and show off. So every class has a channel ability that lets you be able to get your health and your energy source pool back. In the case of the Sith Warrior, it's Channel Hatred. Yes. What is a level 75 juggernaut doing here? <laughs> Whatever. However, you can get a couple of toys to replace that if you don't want those. For example, you can... Put yourself a carbonite. Oh, that felt great. Or, I, I love that they added this. They added quite a few things uh, from the sequel trilogy that <laughs> into this game, including Kylo Ren throwing a fit. By the way, if you're not too happy with uh, how my character looks, I mean, all I can say is you won't have to see him uh, all that much uh, later on. <laughs> I say that in terms of, like, once we get the, um, the transmog stuff going, it won't be an issue. So you're probably noticing I have, uh, I have a couple of pets with me. I, I'm surprised this one's out here. Hold on a second. Nope. Hold on. Uh... Yeah, I don't really have that many uh, pets. I should get some more, but honestly, you know, it's not like if they were if there was more to them, like if they were like the pets in Diablo three, where they go around and collect gold for you. Like, they did something for you, I think that'd be kind of cool. What's funny is I actually have this falling around, too, so I have two pets. Now, notice that I also have a companion here. Now, usually you don't get companions until later, but uh, if you have done later uh, content, you are able to um, unlock companions. Plus, they've changed the companion system a lot. So back in the day... Certain companions fulfilled certain roles, so you were almost inclined to almost always want to take certain companions because of the uh, advantages that they provided, such as a, a, a companion that could tank or a companion that could heal. And you almost... It was kind of a detriment because you wanted to take certain companions for story purposes, but you also knew by, by taking them you were kind of at a disadvantage when it came to the gameplay. So they changed the way the companion system works by actually changing their role. So now, no matter who you have with you, you can change what their role is. So I could change uh, Shay Vizsla's role here to any of these three roles to fulfill that. They also have changed kind of like how the companion system works. These are a few of the extra companions that you can get uh, from doing the later um, content. I believe I can also get an HK droid here unlocked. I just haven't done that chapter yet um there's also some other legacy stuff i can unlock as well that i haven't but i can do that later but to me this was like a big deal but i also found it interesting that this was like hey you can commit to this as well um wh whatever you want to do here like they added a number of various different things here you can also make sure you know what your stance is which of course i'm not i never touch pvp in this game um but they dramatically change a lot number of the gameplay things. You'll notice some things when it comes to the levels. They definitely made this more friendly to those who just want to do the story stuff, like you know, players like myself. Because it almost felt like the MMO stuff was kind of a detriment. Like, oh, it's just getting in the way of me being able to just enjoy the story of all the different classes and such. And to me, it felt like they had actually fixed that. Now, you'll notice I'm probably using some other custom gear from the mailboxes just kind of ignore that from now that that'll 
That's that's temporary. You're just I'll not change later. <laughs> so just kind of bear with it until later when I actually get some more stuff that's more appropriate to what you can be able to see here. So. Excuse me, acolyte. Sergeant Corman, Fifth Infantry Company, Corriban Regiment. Can I, can I talk to you? Make it quick, Sergeant. Of course. You're the acolyte overseer Tremel had brought in special, right? Heading down in the tomb to show what you're made of. And to find myself a Sith Warblade, apparently. Well, here's your chance to not only show off for the overseers, but start building ties to the Imperial military as well. I'm here commanding a hard target mission to exterminate claw slugs in this tomb. They're horrific things. Mouths bigger than your head. I've lost three squads of good men fighting them. They come in packs. They just... they'll swallow a man whole. Your men obviously need better training, Sergeant. Those men were battle-hardened. The enemy just has more numbers. The damn claw slugs breed so fast there's no way to wipe them out conventionally. So we started targeting their egg chambers. They went insane. We managed to get explosives to all of the egg chambers, but the claw slugs were all over us before we could detonate them. So, can I say something real quick? For those of you who don't know, this was my first MMO. And I got it specifically not because I was in its MMOs, but because this was, for me, the, the Star Wars game I always wanted. These kinds of multiple types of characters with these very long, very interesting stories with various choices, light side or dark side. Everything in this game has always appealed to me from what I personally have always wanted in a Star Wars game. I'm not saying it's the best Star Wars game. I'm just saying it's my favorite that I honestly get more preference out of this game than any other Star Wars game I've ever played. But that's just me. If, you know, I know there's plenty of people that absolutely dislike this game and have talked about how this is a bad MMO. The thing is, I think they've actually changed it where it's less of an MMO and more of an actual, like, single-player, story-driven RPG like it probably should have been in the first place. And for me personally, that's a good thing. Like, this was never going to stand up to the other MMOs out there. But I didn't, I honestly don't think it really needed to. I think that they really need to go right to this kind of design right from the get go. And in my opinion, this game is better for it. Are you sure this plan of yours will actually work? I don't know. I have to hope so. Without breeding chambers, the claw slugs lose the numbers. Then we can wipe them out. Don't underestimate those claw slugs, sir. They're, they're smarter than they look. I also bring up how this was my first MMO because you notice the amount of voice acting in this and the cutscenes and the choices. This is what I was hoping to get when I first tried out World of Warcraft, and this was after I'd spent playing this game a lot. And it wasn't really to my liking. And I ended up put, you know, stepping away from WoW when I first played it because it wasn't getting me as much as, say, this game had. It wasn't until much later that I really got used to how different it was and just, you know, it took some getting used to, but eventually, you know, I, it kind of started to gel with me. I was like, okay, it's a different type of game, different type of MMO, don't expect the same thing. So there are bandits here stealing stuff. So let's go get artifacts, but also kill the looters. Now I'm actually going to go get the Warblade first because this is going to say, hey, go kill six core slugs. And then the bonus objective after we get the Warblade is, hey, kill, kicks, kill six core slugs. Not even a challenge. By the way, in case you're wondering, who is this? Well, the br brief few companions I have from the extra stuff actually gives some backstory here. Like, there's this guy, Nico Okar, who is a smuggler. There's this guy, Pax and Rawl, who is a Twi'lek pirate. But then there's Shea Vizsla, who is a Mandalorian legend. An infamous bounty hunter and deadly warrior, Shea Vizsla forged a reputation more than 20 years ago by allying with the Sith Empire against the Jedi and the Republic. She reluctantly took up the mantle of leadership for her people after the rise of the Eternal Empire and the death of Mandalore the Vindicated, declaring herself Mandalore the Avenger. 
She now works with the Outlanders Alliance to break Zaku's iron grip over the galaxy. So yeah, she she's relevant in the later content. But that's yeah. I'm basically using her one because she's a Mandalorian. Because Mandalorians are awesome. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a big fan of Mandalorians, as you can guess. Just wait till we get to our bounty hunter in this game. Seriously. So yeah, she's a bounty hunter, or rather a Mandalorian, who has allied herself with the Sith Empire, or did. So, yeah, so she can provide ranged DPS for me while also healing me. So, let's see. Boom, there we go. I love that I can be able to give all the buffs to any player on these characters because I have them unlocked. I love that so much. It's like in WoW when you're playing a mage and you can give them the intellect buff because you can. So here I can give them every buff because I have it unlocked for my account. I just love that so much. Not even a challenge. You can even hear a bit of her voice acting there. They've also changed how uh, easy it is to actually see what the main story quests are on your planet or such by coloring them differently than they used to be. We've already killed a couple chorus logs, but whatever. You know, I'm actually concerned I'm going to have to turn down the music even more. Seriously. Oh no! That is one of my favorite abilities as a warrior, is to just leap at them. Someone clean up this mess. By the way, yes, we have a uh, level uh, boost here. It came in the mail, so... I was like, alright, let's use it! Whoops, whoops. Oh. Commit. Stay down. Not even a challenge. I guess, uh... And stay down! Ah, well, we'll figure it out. Someone clean up this mess! Not even a challenge. Thank <laughs> you. 
I didn't do that in the air, I love that. Clean up this mess. Boom. I heard the explosions when you set off the charges. Outstanding, sir. You desire more power? Good. Remember, peace is a lie. Hmm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I actually uh, want to move these up, or rather even over here, just so they don't block that uh, little window there. I'm probably going to do that off camera, so... You got it, Shay. Go ahead and take care of them for me. Okay, so now let's go over here to recover artifacts. It's funny how auto loot always seems to be turned off by default. I'm like, why? Someone clean up this mess. Like even in WoW, it's like, why would you have that turned off by default? And stay down. Uh, so now we have to wait. Oh, here we go. There we go.
You notice it said you discovered the Sith Academy. It just adds that to your quick travel thing here, as opposed to you having to walk over here and right click on it like you used to have to. You don't have to do that anymore. In my opinion, they made a number of great, great quality of life changes for this. Rising above the Valley of the Dark Lords, the Sith Academy is a monument to the power of the dark side and the might of the Sith Empire. Would-be students throughout Imperial space compete for the privilege of studying within the Academy walls, but only those strong in the Force are selected, and most of those perish in the struggle to become Sith. Beyond the training rooms lie many secrets that remain hidden to all, but the most powerful Sith Lords. Higher levels contain chambers for members of the Dark Council, where few living creatures are permitted. Whispered rumors suggest that the Emperor himself has a sanctum within the Academy, but no one has seen the Emperor on Korriban for many years. Since the dawn of the Empire, the Valley of the Dark Lords has been the final resting place for the galaxy's most legendary Sith. Carved into the rock walls and anointed with the blood of a thousand slaves, the Valley's tombs are monuments to the influence and strength of their interred lords. A tomb's construction can require decades. Construction, beginning long before death, claims its eventual occupant and ending long after. With the defeat of the Sith Empire and the Great Hyperspace War, Korriban was abandoned with only ancient statues to guard over the valley. Grave robbers and cave-ins wore down the tombs for a thousand years, until the Sith returned and restored Korriban to its former glory. Excavations into the rediscovered tombs are now underway, and already Sith wonder who would be the next great warrior to lie among the legends in the Valley of the Dark Lords. I have taken care of your problem with the looters in the tomb. Ah, then I'll assume my men are dead. Even so, you have done us a great service. Their loss is your gain, I suppose. I have completed my task then. Yes, sir. Do you require medical attention? Be well. Looking to upgrade your arsenal? We'll begin the pieces. Acolyte, I come with a message. Overseer Tremel can teach you the ways of the Sith, but not all of the skills. For that, there are specialists in the Academy. Overseer Tremel wishes you to meet them and learn what you can. Of course, because this is a Bioware game, you gotta have your flirting and your romances, right? The pure blood in your veins gives you a very attractive coloring. To even touch a pure blood woman, you must prove that the Sith run strong through your muddied veins. A Sith woman only respects power. Go. Someday you may learn enough to impress me. If not, kill me. You will find the best trainers in the Academy's archive. You are expected there shortly. So this is a quest to basically direct you to the next nearest trainer. Like, hey, go see a trainer. You are strong, but you could be stronger. Show no mercy. Show no mercy.
Hey there, Acolyte. Hold on a moment. Let me get a look at you. Hmm, so you're Overseer Tremel's secret weapon. Impressive, to be sure. Afraid the old man waited too long to make his move, though. I'm Vemrin, and unlike you, I've fought and bled for everything I have. I demand respect. You don't want to make me angry, Vemrin. Believe it or not, I'm trying to keep you from getting killed. If Overseer Tremel had made his move a year ago when I first arrived, you might have had a chance. But now, too little, too late. This is ridiculous, Vemrin. Let's just kill him and hide the body. We're not on Balmora anymore, Dorgus. There are rules, traditions. We'll leave the shortcuts to Overseer Tremel and his last pathetic hope here. I'm going to take what's yours, and then I'm going to kill you. You have no idea the enemy you're making. Coming, Dolgus? Be right there, Vemrin. Listen to me, you useless priss. Acolytes aren't allowed to murder each other. But accidents happen. It isn't murder without witnesses. No more warnings. Vemrin's the alpha monster here. You go after Vemrin, you die. Um... About the part about murder, if it's... There's no witnesses. Um... You know what? Never mind. Hmm. Good. You've returned. You seem to be in one piece. Tell me, how do you like your new blade? Take a look. I've already blooded it. What are you doing, father? I only just got my war blade, and I've been here six months. I have my reasons, Escala. And you will not breathe a word of this to anyone. Do you hear? Yes. Yes, father. Acolyte, this is Escala, my daughter. She's one of the advanced students here. On her way to becoming Sith. If she minds herself. I'll keep quiet about your new charge, father. But I won't be there if whatever you're planning blows up in your face. Don't mind her, she's just sore that I'm keeping secrets. She growls, but she's loyal. Now, I thought I heard Vemrin's voice in the adjacent chamber before you arrived. Did he make his move so soon? Yeah, I hate him already. I look forward to ending his miserable existence. If things go well, you will have that satisfaction someday. Still, I'd hoped we'd have more time. Vemrin's not the type to sniff around for too long before trying to take a bite. In a drive for sheer numbers, the criteria for Academy admittance has been relaxed. Now anyone with false sensitivity is allowed entrance. Vemrin is mixed blood, the invisible rot eating at the foundation of the Empire. He must not be allowed to advance. Wow, you are a racist. Then again, there's quite a bit of racism throughout the Empire, but boy, this guy is uh, just not even ashamed to admit it. So, you're an elitist snob. You say that like it's a bad thing. Because it is. It's the Sith way. Only the best, only the most pure, should be good enough. Unfortunately, Vemrin's caught the eye of Darth Barriss, one of the most influential Sith Lords. He's being groomed to be Barriss's new apprentice. As Darth Barriss's apprentice, the power at Vemrin's fingertips will be considerable. He could change the Sith for the worse. You must proceed to your next trial immediately. I want you to interrogate three prisoners in the Academy jails and decide their fates. Consider each criminal's story carefully. The decisions you make will be scrutinized, so let your passions guide your judgments. So let me just say right off the bat, Barris is probably one of the reasons why I love the, sto the Sith's warrior story. He is such a great character in this story, and he's probably one of my absolute favorite Sith Lords ever, like in all of Star Wars. Barris is pretty awesome he's intelligent he's competent for the most part at least till we get to the end and he is in my opinion a pretty good voice actor who really helps sell the character and really helps make him a presence throughout the entire story he's not like you know in the inquisitor there's a, a darth who's in the story part of it and then you know 
And it's like, eh, you, you kind of just got here late, and then you made yourself relevant. While Barris is here in the prologue, and then he's in it for the rest of the main story. And it really helps uh, the story itself, in my opinion. By the way, just so you know, before we go to this area with the prisoners, while we are mainly dark side, there are times where we are going to possibly go light side for uh, the betterment or for certain t other types of reasons. So I'm not going to pick every dark side choice, um, but we're mainly going to be focusing on dark side. So if I, if I pick a light side choice, don't be like, whoa, don't, don't be surprised. So it's just kind of like how I'm going to be uh, going about things. You'd better send someone to clean up after me. The slave pens are right there. They have mops. Go to the academy prison. Speak to head jailer Nash and return to me after you've passed judgment on the prisoners. So, um, yeah, I don't like elitism. You know, like, uh, Tremel? I don't like elitist snobs. I really don't. Elitism to me really, really, really rubs me the wrong way. Hmm. Hold on. Let's go see the trainer again. Ah, uh, if there is one thing I don't have in this game that I really wish I did, that many others do, and I'm so jealous because, as far as I know, there's no way to get this. Like, I can't, like, buy it in the cartel market right now, you know, because there's tons of things you can get in the cartel market, you know, whether it's good or, you know, good for bad. But there is one thing I don't have that I wish I did that I'm, I don't think I'm ever going to have. I'll go ahead and, uh... No, not there. Um, collections. Toys. There he is. The Hut Trainer. Or as we love to call him, Happy Hut. <laughs> yeah. Your own trainer. That's a great toy. Because you can just, boop, I don't have to go to find a trainer. I can just bring him right here to me. You know? Plus he's got a scouter. That's really funny. Oh, it's over 9,000! Oh, ho, 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 ho. But I sadly don't have him. Because he was only a pre-order item in for the Rise of the Hut Cartel expansion. As far as I know, there's no other way to get him. Which makes me very, very sad. You are strong. But you could be stronger. One more chirp from you, little bird, and you'll regret it. Chirp, chirp, chirp. Ow! Jerk! If you don't like that, just say so. I can do other animals, too. Dire cat, frog dog, quaking monkey lizard, you name it. You, I'm Jalen Nash. I run these cells in slave pits. You're the acolyte Tremel sent for the test, right? <laughs> he thinks highly of you. Um... Just letting you know, I'm probably not going to be treating Vet very nicely in this run. <laughs> uh, in case you're wondering, my intention is to romance Jaysa. And, oh, she is going to go dark side. Believe me. But, uh, Vet? Uh, yeah, I... Alright, if, if there are those of you that um, do not, in you know, like seeing, you know, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm trying to kind of dance my dance around this, but I'm let's just say like my intention is that we were going to leave the that shock collar on her because it's dark side stuff throughout the run, and you can just keep doing it over. Now you can't continue her story until you take it off. Like that's like something you cannot do. But it's uh, if you don't take it off, you can literally just keep doing it throughout the entire run. 
it gets kind of uh, kind of hilarious. Just oh, thanks. Just it's it gets pretty funny, but at the same time, we are we are torturing her, you know. So yeah, it can. Pro- I can understand if um, that makes it where it can get hard to watch. If there are those of you that um, can't bear watching something like that, I don't blame you if you choose to stop watching. Uh, in that regard. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. I'm even considering not doing it, uh, because, like I said, if I don't take, you know, if I don't take it off, I can't progress her story. And while her story isn't that interesting, in my opinion, I don't really find her story that intriguing or interesting. Um, unless you're playing a light side Sarth- Sith Warrior, then definitely, by all means. Uh, I even made a separate Twi'lek Sith Warrior with uh, that was going to be light side and romance vet. But um, I haven't finished playing him that much. I think I've only gotten to night level 19 or so. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm just kind of giving you guys that heads up. Almost like a... Uh, a, you know, a caution warning or one of those um, uh, viewer discretion is advised, you know, one of those heads up just to let you guys know, okay? Anyways. Then I will repay his faith by sticking to my mission. You should know this situation is highly unusual. Normally an acolyte goes off well for the interrogation. Overseer Tremel had these three shipped in for you. He thinks you're the next coming of Exar Kun. But you ought to know, Tremel ain't the only one paying attention to you. Now, these three prisoners have been transferred here for your inspection. You gotta interrogate them as needed, and then decide their fate. The convicted are usually executed, or given a trial by combat to see if they're worthy. Whatever you decide, you will be the one to carry out the sentence. I was hoping this would keep me entertained. Ah, fine. Let's get started. This one on the left. You freaks aren't getting anything new out of me! Just do whatever you're gonna do! Let me make this plain as day. If you don't cooperate, I will kill you. I'm not afraid to die. Impudent to the last. As I was saying, she was sent to kill an Imperial spy in the Yavin system. Throughout her torture, she maintained that she was hired anonymously. Get it through your damn head! I had no idea he was Imperial, and I don't know who hired me! So you're telling me you're not a Republic assassin? I'm not political. I work for whoever pays. The point is, she doesn't deny the charge. So now you must decide. Execution or trial by combat. Which do you choose? Neither, actually. She could prove useful. Send her to Imperial Intelligence. I won't work for free. Huh. You spared her. Interesting. Please. I am a fellow Sith. Judge me with an open mind and grant me trial by combat, I beg you. In case it's not obvious why I made that choice in regarding her, I'm one who doesn't like to throw away resources. She is someone who's not loyal to you, anyone other than whoever pays. And the Empire can pay very well. And she apparently is a skilled assassin because she was hired to kill, you know, to kill a spy. And the Empire could use more of those. So rather than kill her, why not recruit her? Make her a resource. That's just tends to be my style. Your name, now. This part of Waste is Davotek. Once a valued Sith champion. Until he botched an important mission and caused a thousand Imperial deaths. Now look at him. I served faithfully for 24 years. Then one mistake... And they threw me away. Now I have been left here to rot. Please, let me feel the weight of a weapon once more. I don't do charity work. Feel the weight of a weapon in your throat. I die a disgrace. Good. I won't have to look at his sad, weathered face anymore. Thank you. And he won't have to look at yours either, Jailer. Ah, well, this last prisoner's a bit of a puzzle. He's called Bregg, and he's a jittery little wretch, suspected of supplying forged documents to Republic agents. Strangely enough, he maintains his innocence, despite being severely tortured. 
ne baga imana naki naya bila maknam unya kam na lebek. Your ramblings are falling on deaf ears. Confess and the torture will stop. Kari paka yang naya hara kam serk mera. Ne baga imana naki naya bila maknam unya kam na lebek. Ah, he's never wavered from that line. And the evidence is circumstantial. I suppose it's actually possible he didn't do it. So, what do you decide? I don't care if he's innocent or not. Torture him enough and he'll confess. <laughs> Shut up, you fidgety fool. The decision's been made. Ah, <sighs> well that's that. You're an interesting one, kid. I can see why people are keeping tabs on you. Head back to Overseer Tremel. See what he thinks of your choices. Spoilers, those are the three correct, quote-unquote, correct choices. Shay, is that what you look like without your armor? I'm guessing that's a cartel market uh, alternate appearance there. I was looking through the cartel market earlier and I was just blown away at all the amazing variety of things that are there. I was just like, wow, look at all these things. Really cool stuff. Is this everything? Everything Lord Renning was able to obtain, yes. Then run back to your master in the beast pens before I cut you in half. Sorry to make you wait, Acolyte. These interruptions are incredibly annoying. On to the business at hand, your test in the jails. First, the assassin, Solentz. She attempted to kill an Imperial spy, but was unaware of her client's affiliation. You assigned her to Imperial intelligence. I commend you, that was excellent thinking. Never waste a potential resource. Of course, the answer was obvious. Obvious to you, but not to many who have come before you. Now, Devotek, the former warrior. He wanted combat, but you struck him down. Perfect. The man was utterly useless. I just did it for the fun of it. Well, the instinct was spot on. Once something is used up, it should be eradicated. Lastly, the forger you sent back for more torture, even though he seemed innocent. A strong decision. Leave no stone unturned. The ripple from even a tiny stone can flow a great distance. Well, well, look who just turned deep and insightful. It's always best to know beyond any doubt. After all, what is one man's sanity or life versus the fate of the Empire? Hmm. Each time, each prisoner, you made the best possible decision. You may yet be able to challenge Vemrin for Darth Barris's attention. To celebrate... A small reward. Of course I got it all right. I am perfection. We'll see. Try to remain level-headed. All it takes is one misstep, and you're dead. Because I forced you into the Academy ahead of schedule, Darth Barris will be predisposed to judging you severely. And by severely, I mean fatally. Now... We must hurry to your next trial. Every moment that passes, we risk discovery before we're ready. In the caverns of Mark Aragnos is the beast he left to guard his legacy. Go there, sit among the flames, and wait for the beast to come for you. You think that's enough information? How about you tell me about this beast? All you need to know is that it's ferocious and bloodthirsty, and in no way is it a trial for a normal acolyte. Return to the Valley of the Dark Lords and find the tomb of Marco Ragnos. I'll see you when the beast is slain. Good luck. Oh, 
Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and cut it off here. I'm gonna mess with my UI a bit. Um, gonna see if maybe I'll move the chat box somewhere and move this around so that doesn't block like that text right there on the right. And uh, we'll be back to continue the story. Stay tuned.